Alright, so in this video we're going to be reviewing a segment of enzyme kinetics and specifically the Lineweaver-Burke plot. Now before we go into what a Lineweaver-Burke plot is, let me just pull up a normal graph of uh, an enzymatic reaction. And so hopefully this looks pretty familiar to you. This is just um, this is just depicting the rate of a particular enzymatic reaction and on the x-axis there is substrate concentration and on the y-axis is the velocity of the enzymatic reaction. And just to point out a couple of key points on this graph, there is the Vmax or maximum velocity at which the enzymatic reaction occurs and the and the section where the curve plateaus is where the enzyme is saturated and the point at which the reaction has achieved half of the maximum velocity or half Vmax corresponds with a particular substrate concentration that is termed Km. So now that we've done that brief review, let me pull up a Lineweaver-Burke plot. Okay, so here's a Lineweaver-Burke plot. And basically, a Lineweaver-Burke plot is a double reciprocal plot of the kinetic graph here. And so, so the reciprocal of velocity is just 1 over velocity here on the y-axis, and then the uh, reciprocal of substrate concentration is just 1 over the substrate concentration. And so this curved graph becomes more of a linear one. And the intercepts of the various axes on the Lineweaver-Burke plot have particular significance when you're talking about the effects of an inhibitor on an enzyme or an enzymatic reaction. Um, and so let's point out those important intercepts here. And so the intercept of the x-axis is going to be 1 over negative Km. The y-axis here, where the line crosses over the y-axis, is 1 over Vmax. And then it's also good to know that the slope of this curve is just going to be Km over Vmax. So those are sort of the key takeaway points from the Lineweaver-Burke plot of an enzymatic reaction. The other way that a Lineweaver-Burke plot becomes uh, particularly useful is when you're trying to determine if an inhibitor is either non-competitive or competitive. So if you were to be given a Lineweaver-Burke plot of a particular enzymatic reaction and you were told that an inhibitor was added to this reaction and that altered the rate of the reaction to look like this instead. So if you notice the x-intercept has changed and remember the x-intercept represents 1 over negative Km. If the x-intercept has moved to the right on the graph, this means that K the Km has increased because remember that you're dealing with a reciprocal here. So as the negative of this denominator increases, the x-intercept is going to move to the right. And then you'll also notice that the y-intercept has remained unchanged. And remember that the y-intercept represents 1 over Vmax. So you know that Vmax is the same. So in other words, this inhibitor doesn't alter the max velocity of the enzymatic reaction. It just increases the concentration of the substrate needed to achieve half of the maximum velocity. So this would be a competitive inhibitor. Now let's say we add a different inhibitor. And this inhibitor changes the original graph to instead look like this. So now we notice that the x-intercept has stayed the same. So the Km has remained unchanged, but now the y-intercept has increased. And if the y-intercept has increased, that means that Vmax has decreased. So we'll write that in. So the Km is the same, and then the Vmax has decreased. And so an inhibitor that doesn't change the Km, but ultimately decreases the max velocity of an enzymatic reaction, would be a non-competitive inhibitor. So now a quick sort of shortcut that I find uh, pretty helpful to use when trying to determine whether an inhibitor is a competitive one or a non-competitive one is to remember that competitive inhibitors cross competitively. That's just sort of a memory tool to use. So competitive inhibitors cross competitively, whereas non-competitive inhibitors don't. So hopefully you find that to be a little bit, a little bit useful.